Hey guys, before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to come on and say that I am not a mini album expert, that I have watched a lot of YouTube videos, mostly coming from Rosa Kelly Scrapbooking, which designed, I think, the book, and then also from John Ford, who has his methodical approach to cutting and providing some of the measurements that I'm going to give you when making the binding but I wanted to refer you to those YouTube channels and if you have any questions just leave them down in the comment section below and also please go and visit Rosa Kelly scrapbooking and John Ford's YouTube page <music> Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here today to show you how I am making my mini albums. I have taken instructions from various YouTubers, and I have come and compiled my own way of doing them. And I do like options, so I'm going to show you options as well. And I just wanted to show you that I have made about six of them in this form. And I have showed you this book before, where you've got pockets that you can slide additional pages in on left and right cover. You have a waterfall here, and then you can put pictures into this, and you can change the orientation any way you like. And then this slide also flips over and you can add additional items here. This book here I made based on, completely on what I saw on YouTube. And so then they opened out, I think this opens out one more, and then this end also opens out one more. So I just want to show this again just so you know what it is that we're going to be making today. And then I also have the cover. I did not decorate the spines, but you could also do that with your labeling. That's why I kind of just left it blank. And then the back cover. And then here's another one where I had another paper pack. It was actually a baby paper pack. But what I did was I took all of the things out that reminded me of a baby, but things that an adult could use or that was just cute. And I kept those in. Like this has bunnies. And so it was for like... If you were decorating a baby's room and this one doesn't have the closure yet you could even use magnetic closures on this as well as what I have over here is a magnetic closure but it's the same process just different paper and I just wanted to show you that one and then this is the one that I have done for myself. This book is much fatter. It is actually three and a half inches and it's because I knew I was going to be putting in additional pages and I could have put in more pages into this and I'm still in the process of actually decorating but over here I still have the waterfalls. Here I have a pull out pocket with pictures and so on the back I have the same thing where this is magnetic but then I may also put heart ties on here. I'm not sure yet. But this opens out just like it did on the previous page. And then I also have the actual pullout sheet in the back. I'm working on journaling and then adding some other decorative elements like my die cuts and stuff. But what's different on this one is that I also have two pages that I insert. And this book is really wide enough that I could have added a third page because I do have some extra pictures back here 
that I couldn't get in about 10 more pictures so I could have added another page into this so this is all new for me and I just wanted to show you how I decorated my front cover my spine is plain and my back is just covering the ribbon that I have on the back so and you don't have to have a closure for your book I just thought that this book was going to be a lot fatter so I wanted to add a closure now that I've shown you some of the books so you know exactly what it is we're going to make, I'm going to go through and talk about some of the supplies that you will need. Now, some of these supplies will be optional, but I know that as I was making my book, I kept pulling things and pulling things. So I was trying to give you everything that you could possibly use in this album, and then you can decide from there how you want to do your major decorations but I do have a few decorations that are essential if you want to make your album like the ones I'm actually making so one thing you're gonna need is cutting tools and I have this box cutter here that I can use to cut my chipboard with this cutter here will cut my chipboard it's the caterpillar crop and any of these supplies and things I'll list in my Facebook page and I'll put a link down below so that you can go get those I will get a like a 1% kickback or whatever it is that you order so I appreciate that and my other cutter is a Fiskars trimmer which I use when I'm trimming like very little scraps that are like one inch or less and the reason why I do that is because over here on this side it also has measure measuring lines whereas on this caterpillar it doesn't have lines over here for me to line up very tiny scraps and this is almost an inch away from the edge of the blade so if I needed something a quarter of an inch or a half an inch I need to go to this Fiskars trimmer so those are your cutting tools right there except for the scissors I like to use some kind of titanium scissors these are the Tim Holt scissors and they are seven inches I think the seven inch size they come in various sizes so you may also need some scissors and you're going to need something that you can possibly lift tape paper off and I use either one of these two tools this is the three-in-one tool by Spellbinders and this is just the one that I got when I bought a package of Cricut tools for my uh, heat press stuff where I weed vinyl so I will list these also in the storefront so you can choose what you like you're gonna need something to write with I like to use some kind of a marker doesn't matter what color when I put my storage things in plastic bags which you will also need some storage bags and I'll show you those as I'm showing you product because the products are in the bags some kind of pencil and or a pen next major thing you're going to need is a scoreboard i'm using the martha stewart 12 and a half inch scoreboard and you can also make envelopes with it as well and then it also has a pocket up here that has a scoring tool included however i like to use this teflon tool it's a little bit heavier more solid in my hand has this round lipped edge here and I just like it because I feel like it creases better for me, but that's all personal preference. But I will also list it into the Amazon storefront. Another thing you may or may not need is a hot glue gun. I know when I'm adding my chipboard embellishments, you need some kind of glue gel. And so I, you can use a hot glue gun to make it so that it raises up. Or you can use some kind of coal um, gel glue more of my adhesives here I've got golf tape it's the pro brand I actually bought this off of Amazon it's one of the ways that I will be showing you how to bind your books it actually takes less product because you're just using tape as compared to using 12 by 12 sheets of paper you're gonna need some PVA glue I use pH neutral I ordered this also off of Amazon. This is my second bottle of using this since I've been, I also paper craft, so I already had this in my stash as well, but this is my second bottle that I've ordered from them. 
And then I also have a little small bottle where I can use it to pick this up to glue my pages down as compared to picking up the bigger one all the time, just a weight thing over time. And I also have some strong double-sided tape. There are many brands. There's Redline. Uh, this actually came from AliExpress. Uh, and I'll leave a link for this as well as leave a link for one that's in the Amazon store in the event that you don't order from AliExpress. And when I put my pictures down, I do use my ATG gun here. It's just a double-sided adhesive. doesn't have to be super strong. So those are most of your re supplies that will last you quite a while. Like you can actually get quite a few books done with just this supplies here. So now we're going to talk about some of your disposable supplies and depending on the number of books that you make that you're going to be needing a lot of. So one thing I have here is chipboard. I buy my chipboard off of Amazon. I know it just depends because Amazon, the more people buy it, the more prices go up. But for me, it was cheaper to buy the 12 by 12, even though I'm going to have scraps left over, than it was to buy the 8.5 by 11. So look and see what's cheapest for you. I'll give you a link to the chipboard that I company that I purchased from. My orders come pretty fast. And then they also have where you can get this in different colors as well as different sizes. And here is where I'm showing you I have cut my chipboard and then I have my pieces stored into these plastic bags. And then I just write with a marker on the bag what is in the bag. So I'm not worrying about what's in the bag, especially when I get to my paper cutting. Next up is your base cardstock. I'm kind of torn. It's some companies where I like their black cardstock and other ones where I don't like their black cardstock. And I don't know if it's for all companies or not, but I know sometimes cardstock will kind of rip and tear. And I've had that happen on some. And these are the ones that I am currently using. So this right here is the Paper Studio pack that I get from Hobby Lobby. And it's $8.99 a pack, but I try to catch it on sale and or use a Hobby Lobby coupon. So I use this for my base pages. I use it actually throughout the entire construction of the book. Right here is a A12 pack of paper. There is one cutting part where if you have an A12, you can save cutting one sheet of paper. So I only pull one sheet out of here and then use it with this paper over here. And this right here is Spectrum Noir of Crafters Companion Premium Black Paper Pad. But I actually purchased this at Tuesday morning. So you have to look and see where you can find products that you can use. And then also one binding method that I'm going to show you will call for using two 12 by 12 sheets of black cardstock. And also remember that you don't have to bind in black. You can bind in white, craft paper, any color paper that you want your book base to be. Now for this project, I think I need 12 sheets. 11 from the 8.5 by 11 and then one of the 9 by 12, the A4 size. So I will make sure that I pull out just those 11 sheets when I'm actually constructing or cutting for the book that I'm going to be cutting with you just to make sure that I have the right number for the count. And in addition to that, you're going to need a designer pad. Again, you can get these at Tuesday morning as well. They have pads with at least 48 pages for $6.99 or something like that. <laughs> it's either $5.99 or $6.99. I can't remember right now. But this pad here actually came off of Amazon. It was given to me by one of my subscribers, Miss Bonita Nance. And I am actually going to use this pad today. And I have already gone in and taken out about 20 or so pages that I want to cut. Any pages that I want to, that I think I might want to use as cover pieces, like this one here, then I will hold off using those. This page there, 
and also this was duplicates but this page here I also left both pieces of paper but other than those three pages I went ahead and pulled other sheets out because if I'm doing this I like to do this in bulk so that as I'm cutting I'm not cutting for one journal at a time I cut for like six journals at one time Some optional decorative things you may need is some die cuts. I actually showed you in the binder where I had die cut hearts that held, was held down by this twine. So you may need to use twine if you like. And then another thing is to buy some ribbon. I actually bought my ribbon off at the dollar store for $1 per spool. And they have six yards of 5 8 inch ribbon. So, this here actually came off of AliExpress as well from Alina Craft, and I'll uh, put this in the link down below. This tape also came from Alina Craft. But, as I said, if you don't want to wait, uh, AliExpress takes a long time to deliver, so I'll try to see if I can find some comparable items at reasonable prices on the Amazon website. Also, another item you will need is something to identify where your 4x6 photos go. And that's one of the reasons why I like this album is that they are set up for 4x6 photos and I don't have to do any trimming if I don't want to. So, this here is paper that I purchased from Tuesday morning. And you can see they have these, like, what they have more scrap pads. And so, this one has 120 pieces that are 8.5 by 11. It was $5.00. And then you can see all the different colors that I can get out of here for making mats. And then right here as well, I'd buy different ones. This one's a 12 by 12. It was $8 and it's 100 pieces. And this one here is 12 by 12, 48 pieces for $3.99. So I buy different ones by looking at them on the sides. So that I can look at it and see what color of pages are going to be in there that I can use in my albums. So I just wanted to bring out a stack of these just to show you. Because when I open one of these up, I'll cut the entire stack into four and one fourth by six and one fourth photo mats. That way I have a little border around my photos when I put them down. And we'll come back to that later when we're actually cutting. And this right here is my actual bag of the photo mats that I already have cut. And then what I do is I kind of put them in color order. So I put all of my beiges, browns, grays, greens, pinks, purples, oranges, whatever. I've just used a lot of my oranges in the previous binder uh, that I showed you over there. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.